In the beginning, God was at work on the earth. He created all we see, from the birds of the air, to the fish in the sea, from the plants to animals. And he crowned his creation with humanity. God created us, people, and gave us the earth to dwell in, care for, and enjoy. And through it all, God's desire was always to dwell with man. And he did. And things were perfect, happy, and whole. But distrust and selfishness inflicted the heart of man. And in the ultimate betrayal, we turned our backs on God. But God didn't turn his back on us. He went to work enacting a plan to restore us back to him. And so he came down, he became one of us, and he worked out his plan of restoration through his son, Jesus, healing the sick and loving the broken. God was at work in this world. When it came time for Jesus to leave, he promised he would still be here, still working to restore what once was. He gave us his Holy Spirit to fill, empower, and equip the people that he would call his own, his church. People who would work at bringing God's restoration to this world. So on continents, and nations, and cities, and villages all over this world, Christ is still at work. And we see that every day here in Lancaster, Ohio. Lancaster is a city steeped in history. Despite its small town feel, it boasts about 38,800 people. People from all walks of life. While we've been voted in the top three least racially diverse cities, Lancaster has a diversity all its own. Diversity economically, Diversity in working class. Diversity in its cultural heritage. With farmlands and factories, but also a community that celebrates the arts and music. But where there are people, there is brokenness. And despite all the great things about Lancaster, the city is not without her problems. Like many American landscapes, Lancaster continues to fight an ever-growing drug problem. The divorce rate in Fairfield County, in which Lancaster is the county seat, sits higher than the state average. And despite a skyline full of steeples, approximately 23,500 people claim no religious affiliation. That's almost 40% of the people of Lancaster who need brokenness restored. Who need to hear that God loves them and wants to be in a relationship with them. It's in this setting, with all its good and bad, that God placed Lancaster Community Church. I think in order to understand our history, uh, you have to look at both the good and the bad. And unfortunately for us, our current history begins in the bad. Uh, what I mean by that is our, our church has been around for over 16 years, but uh, in the fall of 2010, our founding pastor and former pastor suddenly resigned and uh, with his resignation created a lot of turmoil in our church. And um, it unfortunately split the church. Well over half of our people left. Um, fairly quickly in the process, and it was just such an emotionally charged time, uh, which is understandable. No matter if you stayed or left, it was difficult. It was just hard. We had for about 10 or 11 weeks straight, uh, the attendance every single week went down. We didn't know where the bottom was. Each week, less people meant less people that you were connected to. The elders made a decision that I believe God supernaturally blessed and it launched our church on a trajectory that has led us to where we are today. And, and that decision was in the midst of the deepest time of turmoil and confusion and intensity that we simply were going to honor God 
and we were going to take the high road and just extend grace and love to people as best we were able. And I really believe that was a moment that because we honored God, He chose to bless us. And uh, you know, I, I remember actually the meeting uh, really well um, as the elders, we were talking about it. And I remember the conversation went to a point where we said, you know, it's quite possible we don't survive this. Um, it's quite possible that LCC will no longer be a church. Um, you know, because we, again, we didn't know where the bottom was. Uh, it's just, every week was just kind of going less. But we just felt like we had a, a certain piece about it that said, if that was God's desire for the church to uh, no longer be, then we were going to honor Him until that last day. We were just trying to uh, really survive and just kind of live for that, that upcoming week. And uh, as we were uh, planning on, you know, how do you do church? We came to the simple conclusion, and this was the elders and the staff that was there, is that we were going to do two things. Keep it really simple. Um, we were going to love God and we were going to love people. And uh, so that's what we focused on. We focused on loving God through really teaching solid the Bible, teaching our people how to worship better, uh, discipling people. But then we also created an environment where we said we're just going to love on people. Anyone that comes is welcome and uh, we were going to help them through whatever season of life. And um, it, was, it was just such a powerful thing. The more we loved God, the more we loved people, the more people He gave us to love. Every single week for two years, the attendance was like higher than the week before. And, uh, and since that time, we've never had a year where we've averaged less uh, attendance than the year before. But the reason I, I just used that number is each one of those people, those numbers were people who came. And they weren't just people, they were stories. And they were situations of life. And uh, like for me in my own heart and, and for our, our staff, if you were to get them in here and, and ask them about it, what we would tell you is not numbers, we would tell you stories. Before LCC, we were heading down a path that would have led to complete destruction of our family. We have learned not only that God must come first, but how to make Him first. We no longer feel stuck in our marriage, and we're excited about the future as a family. Because of LCC, we found a peace that we've never known before. We would tell you the marriages that were reconciled, and we would tell you the families that were brought back together. If I didn't have LCC, my life would be out of control. I didn't listen to anyone, and I did whatever I wanted, even when it was wrong. I was mean, rude, and wild. My life was dark, and I hated it and myself. I thank God all the time for LCC. My attitude and my demeanor <laughs> has changed and my eyes have been open to the beauty and the truth that I am very blessed. LCC was my game changer. Uh, we would talk about generational curses that were broken and, and we would talk about how the, the children are being discipled and memorizing scriptures and how the youth uh, are coming to church even though their parents weren't and now their parents are coming because you know they were coming to church. Six years ago, my brother Brett brought my siblings and I to the Wednesday Night Ministries at LCC. It honestly just changed our life in ways that I can't even explain. Before we came to LCC, um, my family was really just heading down a path that we probably shouldn't have been on. And I'm so grateful for the people at LCC, the youth ministry, and just all the people who have really just uh, reached out to us. When I take a step back to really observe everything that God has done in my life through LCC and how he's used this church to change my life, I'm in absolute awe of his unrelenting love and desire to be in relationship with us. If I didn't have LCC, I would be still lost in life, wondering why am I here and what is my purpose? LCC has led me to find out who I am, my purpose in life, and helped me to know Christ better. I have learned so much from the Bible and I've become connected to people just like me. At LCC, I have found a family of my own that loves me for who I am as a single mother, They've been so supportive of Cambria and I and all the struggles that we've gone through, and I could not ask for a better family. About four years ago, 
our family experienced the loss of a child and that was the time when I felt that I started to understand what the body of Christ was all about. We were supported, we were loved on, we were checked on, we were prayed for. It really, really, really was an eye-opener to us on exactly what the body of Christ should look like. We wouldn't have been able to survive the experience of losing a child. We learned so much as far as exactly what the love of Christ should look like and exactly how we should be a part of that. Without LCC, we wouldn't have experienced that. It gave us an overwhelming sense of peace and it helped us get through all of it. So every single week, as, as people kept coming, it's just one of the most amazing and humbling things to be a part of. And, um, and once God brought that momentum, with it came healing. We knew we had a calling, and our calling was to change Lancaster. Things started to change, and uh, we had a lot of excitement, a lot of momentum, and, and God was just adding to our church every single week. Uh, there's a passage in Acts chapter 2 where it talks about Peter gives this incredible message, and people are saved, and it, it goes on just to describe the early church, and it just says, and the Lord added to their number uh, daily those who were being saved. In many ways, that's what our church felt like. It's just people kept coming, and it was so exciting. Um, it was exciting to, to see the sanctuary full. It was exciting to get to meet new people. But it, it quickly became clear to us that it was also leading us toward a problem. <laughs> uh, and the problem was we were gonna run out of space. We're standing actually in the, the last room that we've not remodeled. They brought me in one day and started talking about maybe utilizing it as a media suite. And I was kind of excited because it was our own space or whatever, but um, the room really is weird. And, and we even, I even was gonna put my desk back in the, the little corner thing. It's kind of an awkward room. It, it's got poles in the middle of it. Um, the, the elevator mechanical room is right there. Uh, the floor's on level in here. There's a, there's a concrete slab that sticks up four inches off the ground. It's not really a, a, a good room to, to really reuse. The fact that uh, this is the only room that we've not remodeled uh, really is a testimony to the fact that we've utilized the building to its capacity. In the past three years, the children's ministry has tripled. So it's exciting, but it also creates a problem for us because we, when we break into small groups, we have hundreds of kids that we just don't have the room for that. So we get 30 or 40 adults in here, the teachers and the volunteers, and then you have 100 kids in here. That's a lot of people in a small space. So when God gives us more kids, we get to that critical point of what do we do now? Where are we gonna put all these kids and these the adults? So it's exciting, but it's scary. Movement started out meeting in this room, but years ago we outgrew this room. So currently we meet in the sanctuary where we really don't have any dedicated space for youth ministry. The only true dedicated space we have is a, a small closet off of the front of the sanctuary, which we share with the music department. There's a lot of hurting people that come in and they don't have any relationships at all. And so for them to begin that process of starting to make true relationships, true friends, healthy friendships, if they had a place for connection, for that to even start, then uh, that would be ideal. Great. One of the ways that we bring wholeness is we give classroom opportunities. I believe that care also comes in relationship, but sometimes people need some entry uh, steps in what to do. Uh, they want to get out of debt. They want to have a better marriage. They want to improve in their new Christian life. They just don't know how to do it. So you just got to give them some, some handles how to do that. I've got about a whole list of things that I wanted as classes and I'm having to do toning down more opportunities for a potential class than I have classrooms for. We have maximized this space. Like there's nothing else we can do here. And so that's when we started the process of looking outside of the walls of this current building. And we really did look at any property in town that was even a possibility, any building that was vacant that might uh, give us the square footage that we need. So we really wanted to stay inside the city. Here, I'll show you a building. Uh, this is one of the ones that we looked at. And I still remember when Joe and I came up uh, to look at the building up here. It's like 200,000, 250,000 square feet, something like that. And uh, we were both driving our trucks and uh, we pulled up here and the doors to the building were open and so we just pulled right in and it was crazy i mean our trucks just they just absolutely absorbed our trucks 
And uh, so these are the two doors you just drove right in and, and it's just huge open space here and over there and uh, it's a lot of storage. When it all came down to it, it was just too big and it would have not been cost effective and not enough parking. So this building was uh, one that I, I absolutely had my heart set on. Uh, I remember the first time I came and actually physically stepped into the building, they had an auction and, and I walked in and I remember looking to the left and it was just huge and I, I looked and I was like, man, this building's you know, gigantic. And then I turned and looked to the right and, and I thought, man, it's just as big that way. And I mean, just loved it. I really had my heart set on it, prayed about it, had other people in the church praying about it. Uh, but it just, you know, it never worked out. The owner really wasn't um, in a position that he had to sell or wanted to sell, and so they didn't really negotiate with us. And when uh, Tractor Supply came in, uh, you know, that kind of became official for us that we weren't in the running anymore for the building. And uh, so one day, our, our real estate agent called me, uh, Jeff Sauer, and, and he said, have, have you considered, and he, he named this location. And, uh, and I was like, well, yeah, that'd be awesome, but there's a current business in there. And so he called me back like less than a week later, and he said, man, I got good news. They're actually gonna put it on the market this upcoming year, uh, which was really cool because it gave us a head start. Like they hadn't officially done it yet, but it gave us a head start to try to secure financing. And God did like all these miracles uh, to make this happen, that this, this spot that we would have never imagined could be a possibility, he opened up to give to us. And this building, in my opinion, is just the absolute perfect building. It, it is the ideal location, the size of the building. We would also be purchasing uh, another outbuilding that had businesses currently leasing from it. And when it was all said and done, the income that we would gain from the leases would overall cover the entire mortgage payment for the purchase of the building. So in essence, it was God gave us this perfect location, perfect building for absolute free. And the only challenge to us was, would we raise the money to remodel it? And I mean, you just can't look at that and see anything but the move of God in that situation. And um, so, you know, for us, we're, we're super excited. We were able to close on the deal. We were able to get the building. And what this showed me, the entire process, as we went through and looked at all these other buildings and our hopes were up and they were down and, and throughout this whole process, what it showed us was that God is absolutely faithful. I mean, he gave us the ideal, but then here's the challenge. And this is really where it comes to with us is God has shown that he is faithful. Now he's challenging us. Will we be faithful? Are we willing to take that next step forward as a church and raise the funds to remodel it so that we can impact the city that we're called to impact? LCC, are you ready to see our new home?